welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video and welcome to night number four out of my 13 nights of fright tonight we're going to be talking about 1932's the mummy yes we have hit the universal monsters so the mummy unlike its predecessors that are based upon books the mummy is actually based on a true thing that happened back in 1922 when they dug up king tut well this gave the writers a idea of a possible new monster and the curse of the pharaoh that that particular tomb had attached to it what would happen if you actually opened him up what will be lurking around the shadows well like that might go more towards dracula what would happen to your toilet paper mind you i haven't seen the universal monster dracula i saw one that came out like in 50 something i can't remember i did the review last year i'll link that one up here that way you can check that out as well if you're interested on what i thought about that particular version of dracula i am excited to see the universal monster dracula but that probably won't be until next year i'm not even gonna lie to you guys just dracula's story in general um it's a love story you guys it really is these poor poor monsters all they want is love you guys let me turn off these lights i meant to turn them off well change them earlier that way i don't have a seizure with that and i totally forgot boris karloff plays the mummy evil tip artist bay all three characters in one so again no i'm not gonna lie to you guys i'm not particularly like familiar with this particular actor and his like icon role within the horror aspect of things now this is not his first universal monster the one that kind of got him up and coming and popping i rather is frankenstein which i think had came out the year previous to this one or something somewhere around the timeline um i haven't seen frankenstein yet but i will that is part of my 13 nights of fright as is frankenstein's bride that should be night five or six the Frankenstein row is supposed to be his more iconic and well-known and really would put him on the map but he does go off and you know he does a lot of horror stuff and uh, he becomes an icon in the horror universe so I do want to uh, pre-warn my color TV lovers out there that this is a black and white movie I know there are quite a few people out there who are just not fond of black and white movies and I just want to let you know that this one is in black and white and then it is set in the 30s so of course you're gonna get that over dramatic acting on the side note you guys I don't want to like to my own horn but I think I could have really done good like back in the silent era days I mean I know I talk a lot but you know like as far as like overacting because I'm very like animated you guys and I think I could have killed it on the screen with my over animation I mean can you just imagine so the way that the movie actually starts off like maybe like the first 10 20 minutes of it is actually really good it sets it up very well you know there's they're digging up this side they find this mummy they are seeing that the mummy is actually fully intact there was no uh removal of the organ so this you know makes them realize that this particular mummy was buried alive what's the reason buried next to these scroll that he was trying to steal well that's part of the reason why he was bringing life <laughs> and these scrolls that has a warning per king tut's warning you know in real life that those yeah, who will open this open will it, find it, death or whatever and they're like should we open it should we not one of them is for it another one isn't then we have like the apprentice that goes and it's all like hmm these people are out there i'm gonna go ahead and open up this box and opens it reads it you know deciphers it it's kind of mumbling some like kind of ancient um spell that wakens up the dead i really like that next scene where all you see is the mummy's hand once he wakes up and grabs the scroll and then just kind of like walks away and then the apprentice literally is going mad mad with laughter just he just cannot believe what he just witnessed he literally goes mad you guys he was mad that's pretty much the only scene that you're going to see boris as the mummy wrapped up so we do flash forward like 10 11 years and now the mummy is emil tap he is part of the society very kind of creepy looking you know 
person here with extremely extremely dry skin poor poor thing i guess he didn't have serums like he needed like some really good hydrating serums some heavy duty like moisturizing so his skin could just like <laughs> soak it up the thing with this movie is that he's not like you know he's not moving slowly or anything like all bandaged up you know like when you see a mummy like especially when you think like old school mummies you think of them bandaged and just kind of like walking like, like this and just kind of dragging dragging the leg i'm like sitting down as i'm trying to like scoosh on up there no we don't get that type of mummy here you guys point we pretty much forget about the curse part of the story that's not really that relevant the remaining of the movie the remaining of the movie is him really trying to find his lost love get her reincarnated will kill the body that you know is taking over the body that you know she's in right now to kind of get a vessel to get his love in there boris he does a really great job when it comes to these like really intensive stares into the camera honestly you guys that's pretty much all my positive which is a lot you guys there is a lot of good stuff to it but the big major negative you guys it's so freaking like it honestly feels like a two hour movie. It's only about an hour, 20, an hour, 30. And there's really nothing happening. Like they set up the story so well that beginning, like I said, opening sequence is amazing. And I was like, oh, we're gonna get some real good shit here. And then again, as the movie goes on, there's really not much going on. It's just a lot of talk. He does do some little magical things with his like magical water pool and it's actually really good when he's like giving these guys like heart attacks and it's just like and like the other people are like i'm telling you guys i would have killed it silent film overacting oh i was born in the wrong time period you guys unfortunately i was not a big major fan of the mummy i personally do prefer the mummy movies from the 90s with Brendan Fraser and Rachel Wise. Like, those are my mummy movies, right? That's what I grew up with, and I those are a lot of fun. There's a lot of excitement going on. There's like an adventure, right? And yeah, the mummy over there also is not on like this either. But this this one is just like really no real adventure to it. I do know that there are there are other mummy movies, and I believe I heard that they really don't go with this particular original one so i don't really know maybe at some point later on well they're technically part of the universal monster world right so maybe next year i'll incorporate one of them as well before i do give you my score if you haven't already don't forget to give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and of course don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new so the mummy 1932 I just wasn't really particularly fond of it, you guys. And it's not a movie that I would personally recommend for you. This is technically my very first Universal Monster movie that I've seen, um, except for The Creature from the Black Lagoon, which you'll get that review tomorrow, and you'll hear my thoughts on that one, which I, I'm going to just give you a little, little sneak peek to it. I feel like it's very underrated, that particular monster there. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Because... It's only an hour 20 minutes long and it honestly felt like a two hour long movie. I am only gonna give The Mummy a small popcorn. If you've seen 1932's The Mummy, let me know down below. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it just not for you? What is your favorite universal monster? We're gonna be talking about, well, The Mummy, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and The Wolfman. I think those are the only three. I feel like I may be missing one, but again, you can check out the schedule on my Instagram. Um, all of them are be on there because I ended up changing it last minute. All right, guys, that is it for me today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>